Okay, Merry Christmas, everyone. How are you doing? Well, I'm just trying to make it through because I'm not going to be seeing my family the way that I normally do. And so I've got a couple of, let's say, our extended family that we have on here all year long. And oh, isn't that cute? Oh, adorable. Okay. <laughs> if this is trying to cheer me up, my husband's trying to cheer me up. He said, How are you doing? I said, Ah, I don't know. You know, I'm supposed to be seeing the kids on Christmas and my family, my brother, nieces, nephews, all of that. So I'm just dealing with it, but I'm happy in my spirit. I know I'm going to get through. It's going to be okay. It's just a little bit sad, but we have some guests to bring on. I was on earlier today, actually, with Pastor Art Pulowski, and also uh, we've invited Lee Harding to come and say hello, and this is going to be pure fun. We're not going to talk a lot about politics or anything like that. The only thing I kind of wanted to say was that, um, hello, everyone. Hello, hello. Hi. Hello. Hello. Oh. <laughs> That's Hi. awesome. Hi. Yay. Hi, everybody. Merry Christmas. Yeah. Oh, I'm going to live. I'm going to live. Um, Hello. How do you say that? You know, you live through someone else's experience. Vicariously. Vicariously. That's it. That's it. How, how are you, Lee Harding? What are you doing tonight? Besides you know what? Here? This is what I'm doing. And thanks so much for having me be part of your Christmas, Laura Lynn. We all think so much of you, and it's not an easy time for a lot of us, but yeah. we have so much to be grateful for, even amidst all the adversity. And even though the social circle might be not quite as big as we wanted it to be this Christmas, but I'm glad art has beat the system. I think that family full of joy is exactly what it should be. We even <laughs> yeah. got uh, your daughter's a, a little up, wonder man. woman there. She's a gift all her own, which is fantastic. <laughs> And uh, of course, I'm uh, laying low in Regina where, uh, you know, I mean, it's not like I could go playing shinny and have two female cops try to wrestle me down unsuccessfully. It's just much more docile here. Yeah. Look at what somebody just wrote. Uh, Dreamcatcher15, one of our viewers, and says, I'm so happy you came on live. We are all getting through this together. And we really yeah. are. Um, you know, so is it snowy there in Regina? On this, uh, there's a lot of snow cool? on the ground. We had a huge, huge amount of snowfall yesterday. And today we just had a wonderful bright day. I saw many, many kids that were going tobogganing, which was welcome to see. And it's just nice to have people enjoying the outdoors and life. I think I'm such that if winter just lasted one nostalgic week, with the, some snow from Christmas to New Year's, that would be fine, and then we can kind of get rid of it. But no, that's not where we live. Uh, when I lived in Victoria, I remember we had uh, one winter we had snowfall on Super Bowl Sunday, and that was almost the first snowfall, and it, it was really thick. There was 50 centimeters that fell, and mm -hmm. people loved it. It lasted a week, and then okay, well that was nice, and then you know it just went away. All right. Well, you know, Canada is so diverse, and I was just in uh, Calgary, where you are there, Art Pulowski, and it was absolutely fabulous. It was so freezing. I was very cold by the end of that day, but it was wonderful. We fed the homeless. That's what you do. You've actually done it uh, since since I left. Um, you've, you've been out there again, right? Yes, we are on the streets four times a week, and we went there Wednesday again, and behold... For months, I have police officers monitoring and taking pictures. I think I'm, I'm so good looking; they can't help themselves. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> um, but on Wednesday, something happened. Maybe I'm losing my charm because there was no police officers, no bylaw officers, no undercover uh, uh, cops. You know, crawling from under the rocks. Nothing. Nothing. We just fed the poor. <laughs> we fed the poor. We had amazing time. Uh, we were singing Christmas carols. Uh, we fed about 80 people or so, so it was um, it was a good day. It was very cold, I have to admit. Yes. Uh, we had a huge dump of snow, so everything is just completely white. Uh, but it was a good day, and I'm I'm very grateful that no one was harassing us, no one was intimidating us. They just let us do what the church is supposed to be doing: taking care of the poor, feeding the 
the homeless, taking care of the orphans and the widows. So uh, we have gathered as a family here, as you could see, I'll show it uh, to you again. And uh, we had our family dinner, which we always have every single year. It's a Polish tradition. And even we've done it under the occupation of Germans, believe it or not. The Nazis attacked Poland in 1939 and we kept Christmas. Wow. And then the Russians took over and guess what? We kept Christmas and then she took over and guess what? <laughs> We go into do Christmas, right? So uh, we survived the Germans. We survived Ottoman yeah. Empire. We survived the Muslims attacking us and the Russians, the Red Army. We're going to survive those socialistic, communistic, little devils. I call them. Absolutely. Um, if you're offended, uh, too bad. Too bad. You know, maybe I shouldn't be saying that it's Christmas after all. And we have this tradition at noon. Even the animals speak human. So I hope that some of those politicians will start speak human, human. again. Be because... humans. Be humans. <laughs> Be kind. Yeah. Be kind. Yeah. So um, we have a good time. We were actually we started to open presents, and um, as we as you were on our show just a couple hours before. Yeah. Um, we are celebrating the greatest gift of all: Jesus Christ, that came mm. and died, was born, left the throne, and died died on the cross, rose from the grave, a greatest gift from God. So when we give gifts to our loved ones, to our friends, and as you um, remember just a few days ago, we gave hundreds of gifts to the homeless people. We do that because we remember that God has given us the greatest gift of all, Himself. Mm -hmm. There is hope, there is joy, there is peace, and we have to give it to others. So that's what we do. And um, I don't know, we were expecting the Gestapo to show up or Red Army, KGB, but they left us be. And <laughs> you know what? That's how it should be. We're not doing right. anything evil or bad. Oh, someone is at the door. Someone is knocking. Wait, wait, oh, it might be. Okay. It might be KGB. Oh, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> we'll so be here. Wait, Keep us see. on. We'll film it. Oh, OK, let's uh, let let him. We have a wandering, um, wandering. Oh person without the family so oh. uh, remember what did i say during the show i said that my my house is open to the people that don't have uh, family and if i was in calgary i would be at your house tonight that's what i'd be doing <laughs> let's see is he coming <laughs> Sorry. okay just a second yeah okay mount is that you? Yeah. Okay, say hi. Say hi. Hello. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Oh, there you go. Real life. oh there welcome you go. to the, the greatest house in Calgary, Pastor Art Pulowski. <laughs> Look, know, he even brought gifts. He's bearing gifts. Oh, even better. All right. <laughs> even better. That's the hard part. Like, Look, I'll I, I show you what's there. Look. Look. I, I'd love to see. Oh, right. very nice. I could yeah, use some you, food. I'm actually a bit. Oh hungry. look in the card. He's he's bribing me. Officer is bribing me. Look. Uh, would, you, would you like to taste a little bit? I would. I would. Um, that's delicious. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. I hope you know. I'm, I hope you like it. I'm so glad that we're we're stepping in in, in your life because this is the most fun. Like Lee's kind of. You, he's kind of there by himself and you know it's me and my husband tonight I gave the kids a call because you know we're we you know we got cameras everywhere around where we live so there's no like sneaking around we got our own kind of people who monitor if you know what I mean so we yeah. don't want to do that well, we're, and... we're risking but um, you got to remember we grew up in Poland right and uh Poland has been something else, if you know what I mean. We are used to Gestapo, SS, KGB. I mean, we grew up in a country like that, so we can take a little bit of heat. Um, I'll just uh, spin around and show you yeah. the okay. family again, and yes. then we'll go back to our gifts. Yeah, okay. So okay. Um, here is you what I want to tell you. Thank you so much for what you're doing and your husband. Be blessed. May God protect you, keep you. May his face shine upon you. May yeah. he always give you peace. I thank you so much for being the voice for the voiceless, yeah. for showing us mm -hmm. courage, 
because that's what you're doing. I believe that many, many more Canadians will rise up and not just Canadians to do what's right. There has been a saying, a, a famous quote, always, there's always a right thing to do the right thing. And you're doing the right thing. You're showing us how to stand up, how to fight. And um, may God bless you in everything, in everything you do, whatever you touch. I hope that there will be not just thousands that will be um, watching your show, but I pray that there will be hundreds of thousands of people that will watch it because it's worth it. You're giving so much good information to the people. And um, I, I'll just tell you this, almost every week, and including today, someone will contact me and this is what they would say. Because of what you're doing, we started a ministry. Because we watched you for a while, we went to the homeless. We started to do what the Bible teaches us to do. And I mean, fire of God is contagious. It's like a wildfire that cannot be stopped by the enemy. So my family will say hi to you. Thank you so much for having me. Thank Sir, you for, for uh, taking a moment to say hi. And thank you for all you do, Pastor Art, and for your inspiration you. and for your standing. Yep. So just wave, wave to all of them. We'll, we'll kind of give them a little look over before we go. I just want to say um, to Regina, remember, God <laughs> loves you too. That's good. God bless Calgary and you. I have to pick on someone, right? Come yeah. on. I have yeah. to pick on someone. Um, Regina sounds good. Yes. See, you you have the red and we have the green right here. So together we can make a Christmas, right? That's right. <laughs> okay. Merry Christmas. So Merry Christmas from my family to oh. you. And here is the gang. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Merry oh, you can do a lot better. Oh, so Merry nice Christmas. Christmas. Look at all that food and people. Remember the old yeah. days, guys? Oh Merry man, Christmas. when we used to, Merry yeah, Christmas. Merry Christmas. Yeah, yeah. God bless and, uh, all I, of I you. And I have something for you. I got something for you. I'll give you a, a few presents as well. So are you ready? Yeah. Okay, grab it. Quick, quickly, quickly, before the kids jump. <laughs> <laughs> wow, that's a lot of presents there. You guys are going to wow, have a yeah. wonderful night. Are you opening them all tonight or tomorrow? Of course. Yes, I want to survive this night. If I would not open them, I'll right. be a dead man. <laughs> oh, that's <laughs> wonderful. The kids, the kids will out. I'll, I'll never survive this ordeal. I can survive the Gestapo and KGB, sure. but this, I promise you, I will not be able to survive. To <laughs> yeah. God that's bless awesome. you. Merry God Christmas bless you. To Thank you. you. Be blessed in Calgary. Good night. God Love bless. to your wife Thank and yourself. You. Thank you. Bye bye. Oh, that's so fantastic. So let's yeah. talk about Christmas movies since it's just me and you here and we're hoping Mark Friesen is going to drop in and give us his top Christmas movies as well. But um, uh, what what is your your favorite Christmas movie there, Lee? You know, oh. I don't know if I have one that stands oh, out. We do. We, do we go five to one? Okay, but he doesn't know if it's that. Is it his list that he sent? Oh, it's what you decided? Okay, J JT somehow not even on the show thinks that he's like the boss of us. So, so, but you don't, he's saying he doesn't know if, if it one stands out. Just follow along. Oh, okay. Follow well, no, along. that's right. The, I sent you my top okay. five and they are there. So, okay, you yeah, like I don't Elf. know if there's one above all the others, but sure. Elf is definitely in the top five. There's a funny moment in Elf. I'm trying to think of what it is, but he's so, he's so innocent you know and that's what comes across as the you know the big funny with him right he's just hysterical good okay what's yeah that four? was so well written so well played yeah okay yeah we'll tell you what your number four is i guess ajt eh, <laughs> okay i can home see alone home alone too yes yeah yeah uh there's going to be a sequel coming a politically correct rainbow one it's going to be called homo alone um yeah. but uh <laughs> I'm teasing. Oh. I am alone. I'm alone. Maybe yeah. it's hetero alone. I right. must have to go and do the iconic scream. Right, right, but, right. But uh, I mean, those are really our classics. They are. We've and, got another uh, one for you, though. Here, Here's the next okay. one. Okay. Okay. Drum roll. There it is. There Home it is. Alone. Exactly. One, 1990. And guess what? 
my young, my oldest son was born in 1990 and he looked exactly like Macaulay Culkin as like, as he was about wow. four or five. So within about five years of Macaulay Culkin coming out, you know, in these shows, my little guy looked just like Macaulay Culkin. It was so funny. So, uh, you know, these days you can see him on YouTube. He had a video, Macaulay Culkin eating a hamburger. You know, it's got like millions of views. So you watch is, it and you're waiting for it. What's he doing now? Well, he's eating something else now because there's another video of him eating something else and it's also got millions. You're always waiting for like, okay, well, what's the thing that made everyone oh, watch right. this? But right. that's the the joke is on you because there really wasn't anything. Right. So Hilarious. he's eating well, alone, but we're all watching. You can right? get a ton so. of views if you're famous, you know, doing pretty much nothing these days. Okay, next uh, video, next movie that uh, that you like is Santa Claus Conquers the Martians. What? I cannot believe how one? quickly yeah? that JT brought this up. You know what? I got this on some like discount rack and I thought that this, this has got to be a B movie and I don't care. I'll watch it. And it's, it's funny. I remember seeing a radio, hearing a radio broadcaster talk about how he'd seen this when he was a kid and he was so yeah. excited. And then like decades later, there was some kind of re-release or some opportunity to see it again. He's like, Oh, this, I remember how great this movie was. And, and then, He's like, oh, it's just not that great. Not the way I remembered when I was a kid, but it's a cute little show. And and so do we have number one? This is number one. Okay. This is number one for you, I think. There you yes. go. That's now, right. People don't always think that Die Hard is a Christmas movie, but I named it as well as one of my nice. top uh, Christmas movies because I remember when Die Hard came out in the theater and you had to go like five times. It was so good. You, you kept bringing people. Come on, let's go see it. I'll see it again. I'll see it again. It was that good. But of course, it was set in a Christmas season. Well, I agree with you. I mean, that was an amazing movie. And I remember uh, being at a sleepover at my friend's house, us watching that. And yeah, I mean, and even one of the following Die Hard movies was also set at Christmas. So it's not Christmassy, but it is still a Christmas movie. Right. Well, and maybe Die Hard's on, eh? Maybe, yeah. maybe since I don't have anything else to do, um, I'll be watching maybe one of these flicks. Okay, so now we're going to do your top five um, muse Christmas songs, okay? That you're, do you remember them? Oh, yeah, so these are yours. yeah. Okay. So that's right now. Again, number five, Peace on Earth. That's not really one that people would normally associate with Christmas, but I don't know. It, Bono has some evocative thoughts there and reflections about how there really isn't peace on Earth, and it's his prayer that it would happen. Silent Night, I remember I had a heavy metal friend who was a pastor's son, and side, <laughs> I'm listening to this song. He's, he's making me listen to this whole metal album, and then I'm like, I'm waiting for it, eh? Because it just, it all starts so silent night. And it's all kind of nice. And and then I'm like, what what happens? He says, just wait, just wait. And then all of a sudden, sleep in heavenly peace. Sleep in heavenly peace, peace, peace. And that's when it starts, hey? And then it gets really crazy. So right, right. that one is really memorable for me. Yeah. And as well, okay. uh, the 12 days of Christmas. Yes. And uh, yes, uh, I saw three ships come sailing in. You know, uh, Bruce Coburn has a really interesting is. version. Okay. Well, I think it's it's got kind of an Eastern feel. I saw okay. three ships come sailing in on Christmas Day, on Christmas Day. I saw three ships come sailing in on Christmas Day in the morning. Of course, no oh. ships come sailing in. It's a sketch one, so it definitely wasn't written You've here. Kind of a uh, nice maybe a couple voice, tumbleweeds Lee. blew in. In all kind this of. time, yeah, that I've that I've uh, I've only thought you had a good talking voice, but actually you can sing. So now that I know that, maybe this year we'll have a couple opportunities for you, us to do an interview about something pressing that that the prime minister is going through, and then you can maybe you know put together a little song or that ties it all together. Yeah, the parodies come pretty easily to me. So that is a possibility. Okay. And No Holy Night, I think, was just always the most beautiful yes. of the traditional Christmas songs. Oh. And uh, I like the one about the sleigh. 
I think, uh, I guess this year, ding dong merrily on high. I think all of these uh, ding dongs making these COVID rules, I don't know what they're high on, but they're yeah. on their high horse anyway. So. Ding dong means something different this year, <laughs> right? <laughs> ding dong. Yes, that's ding. right. Yeah, we're not actually referring to bells. Yeah. Okay, so is it mine now? My what? what? I want to hear yours. Yeah, my number five movie. Okay, I don't remember what it is because I I had he forced me to give him a list today. Oh yeah, oh. that's right. I love Miracle on Thirty Fourth Street. That's Super a wonderful. beautiful one. It really is. Yes, and it's nice to um, hang out with the family and uh, watch these shows. Okay, what's my next one? And yes, there okay, it is. So my number four was similar to your yeah top top one there die hard and i i just love die hard i really do and then at the end i think he gets back together with his wife and you know everything's all better you just sometimes you need a few dragons or espionage spy killers to step in to know what's really important to you and that's what i there you go die hard you know we have a new hero to look at someone's taken hostage of the whole building yeah and he, he's evil and has uh, plans to bring on destruction and take everything for himself and so you know you just gotta defuse it against all odds so then maybe it's realize, a metaphor for our times right right then you realize what's really important you know okay what's yeah. my next one? Oh, home alone yes i loved that I also had that as one of my top. And then, is it the Santa Claus movie yet, or is that my number one? I don't remember. Oh, Scrooge, yeah, 1988. Oh, yeah. yeah, I love Bill Murray. Um, now, this it's a little bit of a crass show, but I love the little gal here who's just a freak. I mean, she's a, just a freak of nature. And she's supposed to be, is it Christmas? Uh, is, is she future? Or... And she swats him around and hits him and stuff. Oh, I just thought that was hysterical. I love that part. Well, yes, and her children are working for the Calgary police now. For real? Oh, no. You're joking. Yeah, okay. <laughs> like, wow, well, okay. Right, I get it. Yeah, we're kind of like, you know, making it look like. Well, and the thing is, is Bill Murray uh, is such a nasty, awful guy. And because he goes through hell and has all of these demonic forces come against him in this movie he gets it he finally gets what's important and maybe that is as well why we're going through such a difficult time but i love him in what about bob and also um what what was the other one what about bob oh and uh groundhog day yeah bill murray he's just one of my uh you know all-time favorites for like a almost uh he's got a real sarcastic sense of humor and sometimes uh an innocent like broken <laughs> dumb dumb-witted kind of look okay what was my well you have one? to have a sense of humor when you have the same initials as a bowel movement so you can check that off when you're in the hospital <sighs> you've had your bill murray today I it's kind of tough really i had never put that together until now lee thank you thank you for that <clears throat> okay the santa claus movie now, my favorite scene in the Santa Claus movie is when uh, Tim Allen, so he's Santa Claus, and he, he basically, he's become Santa Claus, and he doesn't really know what's going on, so he's eating everything in sight, and he's been away from work for a little while. He goes back to work, and now he's not Mr. Neat Trim, you know, like you with your white shirt and your tie on. He's got, like um sweats and a big you know shirt on because he's gained so much weight and everyone in the room is completely taken back because suddenly he's beginning to look more like a santa claus than the businessman that they had always been dealing with and that scene i don't know i lose it every time i see that scene it's just one of my favorites uh so i love it you know um if if I if I had to just if I had all of those movies available to me like and they're all you know lined up on the thing I I would of those movies I'd probably watch Home Alone but we've already watched Scrooge this year so we saw that a uh, couple yeah a couple nights ago okay what's my favorite and you know songs? I think yeah. that uh, movie the A Christmas Carol 
the original black and white one with Cratchit. I think that that just becomes more relevant every single year about mass capitalism taking over and people who, you know, and, and you really do hope that people can rediscover what it means to be human and what's really important in life. Yes, and it is about that. <clears throat> I find even, you know, with this strange, strange Christmas, uh, I find that, you know, one of the things that I'm thinking is it was just always what we took for granted that we did every Christmas of my entire life. This is nothing like what we always did. And so I just can't wait, you know, to have um, some semblance of normal. And I do pray and hope for that, you know, especially if, uh, you know, there's new surprise outbreaks that might be coming our way, right? So here we are. Do you have well, my songs you know, or you don't? I screwed it up, but, but oh, it's okay. I, I was just thinking about how... Yeah. Before we get into your songs, I was thinking tonight about how in Jesus' first arrival, you had government mandates that were forcing people to do things. But instead of isolating everyone, they were forcing them to show up in their hometown to register. So everyone's getting their name checked off. And so the government knows who you are and where you're from and how many people are in your family. And what a humble entrance for our Lord to be there with the animals in the stable uh, and the smell. And there's no room. There is no room. You know, and... that is such a parallel. <clears throat> it's such a parallel that you're making that uh, they were literally forced. Um, I guess a, a census was being done and they were literally forced to go to their hometowns and that's how the fulfillment of the prophetic word that that the savior the messiah would be born in bethlehem and that is not where they lived they lived in nazareth i believe and so mary and joseph therefore had to go all that way to get to bethlehem where the fulfillment of because uh through jesus life uh, li quite literally you know dozens of prophecies were really directly fulfilled it had to be so specific isaiah hundreds of years before predicted he would be born in bethlehem and you're right there was this tyrannical thing going on and also when the the wise men went and found him um herod wanted then to kill all the babies and in fact a huge and brutal murdering of all children under the age of two took place right after Jesus was born. Well, that's the irony is, uh, I guess terror at its worst is when you do believe in the Bible and you're coming out all out against it. Yes. And maybe we're going to have to deal with an enemy like that, that knows exactly and, and actually believes the truth of some of it, but is in total opposition to it because it threatens the power structure. Yes. Yeah, absolutely. Um, okay, I'll finish up my songs for you. Uh, my very, actually, are we going to start with the fifth? Because you wrong. said you, yeah, it's wrong, but that's okay because it's the same as the first. But I don't, oh, it's supposed to be Little Drummer Boy. Um, so Little Drummer Boy was my fifth. Joy to the World, Silent Night, Oh Come Let Us Adore Him, and Mary Did You Know. You know that one, Mary Did You Know That Your Baby Boy yeah. Would One Day Save the World, basically. And here's this, uh, you know, this woman thrown into a place where uh, she didn't know that, you know, what it entailed when the angel approached her and said, you know, you're going to have a child. And she says, how is that possible? And she didn't know that it would actually really cost her so much. And I put something up on Facebook, actually. I'm just uh, reminded of this today where I was sharing uh, my thoughts on Christmas. And what a price uh, Mary did pay. You know, her reputation was marred because, of course, she wasn't married to Joseph yet. And so she, she was a... Uh, a woman, you know, pregnant out of wedlock. So what are you going to do? Sort of like, oh, yeah, but it's not really because I'm carrying the Messiah. And that was probably yeah. a pretty hard thing to try to convince people was actually the case, right? So she paid such a magnificent price 
uh, you know, for this. And in fact, the whole family did. And Joseph, you know, thank God, an angel came to him because he, you know, she's with child and he's supposed to believe that it was an immaculate conception. Okay. Right. Yeah. So he's going to put her away, right? He's going to like break up with her. And in fact, I guess in those times, it could have been even be stoned. You know, it could have been very serious, but he, he protected her and he covered her and chose to be with um, her after the angel approached. Yeah, you know, God doesn't always explain to everyone around us what it means when we do things to follow him. And part of Jesus bearing our shame really began at conception. And he went through all of the aspects of human frailty and just really to be our Lord. And so, I mean, he can be the Lord of the political prisoners. He can be the Lord of the wrongfully accused. He can be the Lord of the fatherless, uh, the Lord of those who cover, who, um, who have had shame put upon them because of his own life experience. Mm. And so uh, I've heard good. it said by Rick Joyner that when our wounds are healed, they become badges of authority for us to heal others. Hmm. And uh, hopefully, the things that we're suffering Badges can of authority go to a to good heal end. Others. It is so often true that uh, God will take your mess and turn it into your message so that that, is, that place where there was such brokenness actually does become the place where you're able to speak into others' lives. So very, very true. Well, um, you know, what... What an incredible journey it is, and what a special time. And although everything's a little bit different, um, several years ago, I wrote this and I put it up on my page, and I had a nice little Christmas thing there. But I says it's almost. I said it's almost Christmas time when we celebrate the birthday of the Messiah and the greatest story ever told. History records the staggering account of Jesus' birth, born in one of the smallest countries in the world to a poor family with no notable name, no influence, no authority in earthly realms, just an ordinary man and woman who said yes to an extraordinary calling. A young virgin given the most incredible news bestowed a most unusual destiny, one that would in fact mar her reputation with those who knew her, yet would eventually lead her to be part of the most inconceivable redemption gift since time began. Because of the Christ of Christmas, we can have total forgiveness, complete peace, abundant joy and contentment, even when we do not know how some things are going to work out in our lives. Isaiah 9, 6 foretold God's plan for an incredible life. It says, for unto us a child is born, Unto us a son is given, and the government will be upon his shoulder, and his name will be called Wonderful, Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. In that one verse, we are given a promise and a hope that transcends every problem we might encounter. It tells us he is wonderful, which means he can be trusted. He is our counselor, which means he will guide us through the roughest spots with wisdom. He is mighty, which says that his power is fiercely greater than any problem we face. He is an everlasting father with unconditional love for us as his children. And if we need peace in our storm, he is the prince of peace. With all authority to speak calm to those winds of adversity, the reason for the season, Jesus, is the gift who never stops giving. It's a promise from God to us at Christmas and every day of this year. So grateful at this beautiful season that a king became a child, a prince became a pauper, a ruler became a servant, and the creator became the creation. A lover became the despised so that we could be accepted. A messiah became our savior and a redeemer became our defender. Merry Christmas. So beautiful. that's how personal it is to me. Christmas is never... You know, since I was young, grew up in Africa, we never had snow in Uganda, East Africa, right? When I didn't, I didn't know what a, what a snowy Christmas was until I was, you know, I guess eight. And then we were in Takto Yaktak. And then, yeah, it was snowy pretty much wow. eight months of the year, <laughs> you know. But 
Um, what a, a precious time. It's not really about all of the wonderful gifts and all of that, but it is about celebrating the greatest gift. And doing that with family is a particularly wonderful thing. Absolutely. I was just thinking about, I was in Bethlehem in 2009 and we went across it's very close to jerusalem of course but it's on the other side of the wall where the west bank palestinians are and we visited i think it was a baptist church and the person there he said i was the first in my family to become a christian and he said my whole family has since become christians but he said my brother was one of my brothers was last it took him 26 years and then he was evangelizing in arab east jerusalem and he got hacked to death with machetes and so he said, don't forget about us, because he said the believers, like there's a romance that people have about the Jews returning to the Holy Land. But he said for the Arab Christians, there's, you know, it's not like there's lots of love from the Muslim uh, community that surrounds them or even the Jewish community of Israel. So they feel in some ways sort of hemmed in on both sides. Saw a wonderful man, though, on Sid Roth's It's Supernatural, who recently talked, who's from Bethlehem. And they were actually, there was a discussion between the Jews and the Muslims. And he was the only Christian on attendance there. And it had to do, something to do with um, having some, changing Jerusalem and doing something with where the Dome of the Rock is. And who knows if it was leading to the Third Temple or not. But... Yeah, we live in interesting times, and this is all heading towards something. And Hasn't it been the most I'm, unusual year of your whole life, Lee? Would you say? Uh, well, I, I certainly, for the for the larger world, it has been. I've had a lot of weird years, and I'm still hoping for a message to come out of my mess. And yeah, I am. Oh, it will. I remember uh, one time, uh, I like General Patton, and one of his stories was about the Chinese hitchhiker. And in the story, they were training in the southern United States. Now, this didn't happen directly to him, but he kept drawing wisdom out, endless wisdom out of the story. And what happened was there was a Chinese fellow who had enlisted in the army, and he understood very little English and spoke even less. Now, somehow he lost the troops that he was trading with. And so what happened was he was trying to get back with his troop, but he didn't realize that when he were hitchhiking, it was supposed to be like this. Instead, he went like this. Now, the real irony was somehow someone had given him a military police armband, which gave him the authority to direct traffic. So what would happen is there'd be a, a tank coming and he would go like this and the tank would turn around and, and go and then he'd be at the crossroads, he'd see <laughs> them and then he'd, he'd point and they would go the other way. So, but sometimes somehow he would get a ride and then he'd, I don't know, what, you know he'd, he'd get off at some point where he saw fit. Anyways, he sent troops, tanks and trucks all over Louisiana and Texas. Yeah. And uh, one of the times Patton said, you know, how many of us are living life like the Chinese hitchhiker? We don't know who we really are or what it is we're doing. And uh, I know in some larger senses, and I guess that's the thing that I can take comfort in, is I know in yeah. the ultimate senses where I'm going, who I'm serving, and uh, it's really up to him to uh, take the tapestry and make something beautiful out of it. So uh, we're, we're still very blessed. And to know Jesus is a blessing that is the open secret People know about it, but until you actually become born again, you don't really know what you're missing. You don't know the dimension, what it means to have the Holy Spirit in your life and where religion becomes relationship. Well, my greatest, um, you know, uh, most warm moments in my life are when I really didn't have anyone else left to depend on. And he was there. He was there in the darkest, darkest moments of my life and he gave me great comfort you know god was there the power of the holy spirit you know in truth the bible teaches us that god's in heaven and jesus is in heaven but the holy spirit was sent to be with us now at this time before the great apocalypse before it all turns upside down you know and suddenly it feels like maybe 2020 is a bit um closer to that 
but I'm just, I, I am so grateful that I've had this opportunity to have such a powerful and close relationship with God so that, you know, when Christmas isn't exactly usual, I'm going to get through that. And when there's a heartbreak, I'm going to get through that. And when there's financial difficulty, I'm going to get through that because I know he's, he's watching over me. And he does, you know, you mentioned, uh, you know, about a mess. I, I just think he loves using broken people. You know, 1 Corinthians 1.26 you know that he, he loves to use the foolish things of the world to confound the wise um i have felt at times you know that there was just you know decisions that i'd made that were so costly and you get in a real funk about it you get in a real bad place sometimes and christmas can be particularly difficult even on a good year uh for for people that have been through difficult things so I imagine that I'm not the only one that's having an unusual Christmas. And there are people out there, not only did COVID-19 hit this year, but maybe, you know, some broken relationships hit. Maybe you're battling an addiction this year. You know, anxiety has really caused uh, a negative effect. Fear and anxiety has caused a lot of negativity over our world and the power and the goodness of God is that he is close to the brokenhearted, that he walks us through. Um, you know, I love Psalms 23. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. Why? Because he's with me. Because he's with me. And sometimes when you turn out the light at night and you finally turn that TV off that was maybe some kind of consolation or some comfort to you in your loneliness, and you turn all that off and you just get quiet, you know, it's the best time because maybe you can take a moment to consider that he's right there. The power of the Holy Spirit is right there, not going anywhere. He's going to be with you at Christmas, going to be with you all year long. He's always just a prayer away. And yet uh, sometimes we live our lives without even talking to God for days on end because we're, we're so engaged, you know, in our, our own business and the busyness of life. But this is a good, um, it's a good reminder. Absolutely. You know, one of the things that uh, Charlotte and I do sometimes is we'll play Dappy T Keys. He's a Nigerian that moved to Canada. I think he lives in Ottawa. And we'll just play his music and then we'll start to pray. Mm -hmm. And we'll play the YouTube through Roku. And then we know when we've hit an hour because it will say video pause. Do you want to keep watching? And then. You know, maybe we'll play it through the end. But there's something about where it sets the atmosphere. And I thought, you know what? If yeah. God has arrested, like, whatever the devil's plans were for this time, if we have had our our times interrupted and we're not watching NHL because it's not on, we didn't watch CFL because it's not on, and I don't know what distractions the ladies have had that they, they don't normally, you know, they don't get to do anymore. But... It is a time where people really should think about the deeper things because we're starting to realize that maybe the lives that we have been used to, what if they don't happen? What if they don't come back? Now, I think they will. I think that we're going to have a time of freedom and prosperity that's coming just ahead that is going to be incredible. Fantastic. Um, but yes, absolutely. I want to go you with know, that plan. I like that. You, you believe that. Tell me a bit more about that. Well... Yes, I do. And I think that out of uh, the uh, the stolen election in the United States, which I can't believe that these media outlets still say that there was no evidence. I mean, there's evidence <laughs> all over the place. You've and it, it's just absolutely a, evil or dumb in order to say that, that there's well, no yeah, we, evidence. Yeah. But I mean, if we think about some of the deeper things, you know, things even like God made the world and there's no way it could have happened by chance. You know, there's there's so many things that people believe just because a, a whole bunch of other people have said it was. They assume they would have heard about it by now, and it's just not that way. So, uh, I don't know where this Christmas train was going. I think it got derailed in in a few different spider spots. But just to say, yes, back on track yeah. with where this is going yeah i do think that there's going to be a time of prosperity i think there's going to be a time of justice mm -hmm. and uh, if donald trump can find a way to overcome 
the bad advice that he's getting from some people, the traders. Uh, I think that there's going to be a whole bunch of dominoes falling where it will reach well, into our country heard, and into the whole heard, world. Uh, right. Uh, and my husband, he was like, no, we're not going to do anything on politics and all of that. You know, he thinks he's the big boss of the show, eh? But, um, uh, you know, so I said, yeah, yeah, no, good. <laughs> Clearly not. I said, yeah, yeah. But I do just We don't have say, to either. No, no. But I do just want, I love talking about just a little bit, a little encouragement on this Christmas Eve that for those of you who understand the, the gravity of how powerful, um, you know, and how important it is for, for Trump, uh, hopefully to be successful in uh, outing all of this corruption. There, there has been something that was put forward by Mike Pence. It had to have been in by yesterday and they got it in. And what it basically is, is as the vice president, his, he is fulfilling a certain duty and he's basically stating that if you are going to um, certify those states, if they have uh, certified them, they will be held to account. First of all, it holds uh, people to extreme account. And uh, I'm going to get the exact document that he signed and maybe go over it, probably Boxing Day. I'll, um, I don't think I can, you know, muster up to do it tomorrow. Uh, nobody wants to hear about that on Christmas just because I have nothing to do. No big deal. Well, the Democrats don't. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. You think that they're not celebrating, you mean? Oh, they just wouldn't want to hear about uh, the, the they, plans well, They don't of Trump. want to hear about I, any of this. That's for sure. Well, I heard that it snuck in that big 5,000-page defense bill that Trump vetoed anyway was a little line in there, Trump can't use the Insurrection Act. Apparently that right. was in there. I haven't read the thing because that's a lot of pages to read so to for, find out if there's any truth. In right. That. So if everybody understands, so Trump is trying to give a, a stimulus um, sort of a, a help to families whereby he would give two thousand dollars not just six hundred dollars that the democrats came up it's kind of like our serb would you say it's well congress like they they've already had the relief bill but congress was coming up with something subsequent to it and to they families. threw everything but the kitchen sink into it and right. in the united states the president has a veto on legislation if he wants and so he just said i'm not signing it because there was money for all over the world it was and for what Pakistan, often happens gender teaching you know billions of dollars mm -hmm. for this and that that had nothing to do with helping americans it was going all over the place right like so the democrats were saying in order to pass this money for americans for two thousand dollars each to help them out at this time you got to pass all this other stuff of course he couldn't do that of course not. Well, I'm glad that he stood against it. And Jerome Corsi, in his most recent broadcast, he had Patrick Byrne on there. And Patrick Byrne and Sidney Powell, who was General Flynn's lawyer and General Flynn himself, they somehow got their way into the White House to meet with them. And he just said, like, oh, I don't, it, it's best probably just to listen to hear him give the account. But he said, they, there are some people there that are just telling him all the wrong things. And he right. said, he had never met President Trump before, and he was so impressed by his humanity. Yeah. And that that he said, you know, like the the way it was filtered through who he was through the media lens was just so different from who he actually was in person. Yeah. And uh, you've seen this. This actually happened even in the French Revolution, where uh, people who I mean, who the public thought the king was and the queen was was so very different from who they actually were. Right. So this is an old tactic to foment lies. And but we're going to see a time where truth prevails. And I think I it's almost that. going to be like Jesus's final week, because in Jesus's final week, he showed up in Jerusalem and he overturned the tables of the money changers. Mm -hmm. And if we knew how much the banks had to do with a lot of the things that are going on, the he overturned that. And uh, and and then he had a time where he was speaking truth and that they could not refute. And then, you know, his final sufferings began. And Jesus lived his whole life in the shadow of the cross. There was a painting that was done where Jesus was a young boy working alongside his father as a carpenter. And but then in the shadow of the boyish figure formed him on the cross. And so it was symbolizing that his whole life was lived. He, he basically came to die. And yeah, and yet in dying, die. he won. He won the ultimate victory. And so. You know, whether our 
you know, uh, we're like a shooting star and however long we get, we get and let's shine brightly and play our role until it's done, whatever that means. So I do think there's going to be a wonderful time where this is going to be really uh, some of the agendas of darkness are really going to get throttled and driven back. And uh, let's see how long we can we push that, that envelope. Yeah. We pray for yeah. That, for great uh, kingdoms of, of darkness to come down and for Donald Trump to be put in his rightful place. Uh, millions of people have not given up on that. And in fact, there is a way forward. And the deadline was met yesterday for the next leg. And so you don't need to be upset and think that it's all over and done. Um, as you know, people have been a little depressed at seeing, you know, darkness and the takeover of MSM and, uh, you know, left wing um, politicians. And then the way that, you know, the, the big tech companies have completely uh, misled the people. They have stifled information. They have misrepresented who Donald Trump is. Of course, everybody hates him. The only thing that you ever see in the papers is some hideous, stupid thing and a bad picture. You know, nothing to do with the accomplishments uh, that he's done, which are phenomenal. And I have tremendous respect for him, but I've spent a lot of time looking behind the scenes at, at who he really is, what he's done, Melania, she's a beautiful, beautiful lady inside and out. And uh, so we do pray for God's justice to come to North America as well as Canada. Yeah, so, I saw a meme recently where Obama is standing beside Trump and the caption says, how do you sleep at night knowing how many people hate you? And he says, I sleep just fine naked beside a supermodel. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's so funny. Well, we have a funny clip actually of a video, but so I asked my husband because uh, we were doing this, if he would also give us, you know, he, he does not like I'm to be glad. on camera at all. So I said, well, what is your five movies and your five songs that you love? And actually he, he really loves music. He's, he really, he likes to kind of explore it almost. Um, he knows pretty much every artist from like the 60s, 70s, 80s. You're like an expert in that. Yeah. Boy, like, it sounds like me. Really? Oh, then you yeah. guys can have fun. Yeah. And, and he knows trivia, like really strange trivia, kind of like Cliffy on Cheers. He really knows yeah. that kind of stuff. Yeah, he saves it up and soon, and he just pops out this golden nugget of wisdom or some factoid about so I'm like, you know, how do you even know that? Oh, I heard it years ago. He files it away in his brain. He just brings it up. So he's quite brilliant that way. And he's really, he's a wordsmith as well. But he's behind the scenes. He never wants to be in front of the camera. He He's a bit of an introvert. But I said, okay, well, at least pop up on the screen. What, which ones do you want to do first? Your movies? Five yeah, of the movies? Okay, so we're going to go with your fifth movie here. Uh, and that is Christmas Story. Oh, okay. Christmas Story, <laughs> 1983. Is that the oh, one where like, it says, I saw this on TV right. the other day. I right. didn't watch much of it. And I couldn't figure out quite what era it was from. But CBC was airing it. Well, how about that? Yep, 1983. Now that, but wasn't that, it's set in the 50s, set in the 50s right. And is this the one where they say, don't poke your eye out or? You'll shoot your eye out. You'll shoot your eye out, kid. Yeah, okay, all right. So that's that's your number five. Okay, number four is, of course. Yeah. Of course. Tic-tac-toe. We just got three in a row. You know, that was also on Mark, um, Mark Friesen's uh, top, top list was the Die Hard. Okay, which, what's the, the next one then? Oh, yeah. There it is. Yeah. So the thing about my husband, he loves black and white movies. Um, he records them on television endlessly. Like he's usually on our PVR, there's four to five, uh, you know, black and white movies. And on the, you know, most nights he's like, hey, you want to watch a movie? I'm like, well, how, how old is it? Because I like color, you know, so, but it, the, I mean, these movies are classic and I have watched plenty with him. I have, I have three, he said, I have so many. 
and they are generally really good. And some of the older ones too, we've had quite a laugh at like the comedy, the writing is, is phenomenal. So, okay. What's your number? Is it two now? Yeah. It's a wonderful yeah. life. Of course. Yeah. 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 Classic. Okay. Next one. And you're, this is number one. Oh, white Christmas. 1954. Yeah, Hollywood is also going to redo this one, but it's going to be called a non-white Christmas so that they can get Academy <laughs> Awards with it. <laughs> white fragility, white privilege Christmas. <laughs> 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 oh, that's funny. Yes. Oh, well, those are good Christmas uh, movies. And I have watched every one of those with them. Okay. Yeah. And your five favorite songs, Carol, your Christmas carols, what are they? Okay. So... Do they know it's Christmas? And who's that by? That's Bambi. Oh, okay. I, do I know this one? Do they know oh, yep. Yeah, I do know it. Yeah. yeah. I can't sing, Look so I'm not going to try, but, but it's good. Blue Christmas. Excellent. By Porky Pig. By Porky Pig. Not the one by Elvis? No. Okay. All right. Santa Claus is coming to town. Yes, of course. The Bruce Springsteen version. Very important that who's doing the singing. Christmas All Over Again and Little Drummer Boy, Peace on Earth. Wow, yes. Bing Crosby and David Bowie. That like that it. one avoided my existence. I bow down. I cannot match that level of music knowledge. Yeah. <laughs> oh, so fun. Now, do we have that clip before we go? Yeah, we have a little bit of a, a clip, a little parody on Christmas right now. It's kind of more truth than fiction. Uh, he's going to load that up. And so so tomorrow, Lee, are you, are you able to spend it with a, a loved one or two? Yes, yes. Good. I'm going to see Charlotte and uh, at least one of her boys will be there probably. Good. Maybe the other one will come as well. And... Uh, yeah. Yeah. So it, you know, it maybe will we be all just nice. we got to get that extra, you know, cup of eggnog and maybe a coffee. You know, when I love coffee, I do. I'm a big coffee. Coffee drinker. is good. You know, and some of those Christmas treats that maybe we're not sharing with other people, but we've got. You know, we've probably all bought a you know a few things that are nice and have a little meal. And um, it is different this year, but but it's okay. We're gonna get through it, and may God be the joy you know, that is with us. But before we, before we do final closing, I just want to show everyone this before we get going. This is a really funny little doozy. For a number of years now, we've made it socially illegal for you to say Merry Christmas. We've exchanged it with Happy Holidays and you went with it. Thank you for helping our efforts to erase religion because you can't have communism with freedom of religion. We wouldn't want people following the Lord's guidance over our guidance. Oh yeah, and all churches are closed for the foreseeable future. I love a good coincidence. And then the three wise men greeted baby Jesus. Ah, I don't think we need to hear any more about that guy. But would you like to hear more about how your government is great and protects you? Well, they've scared you, so you're scared. And now they're protecting you from what they told you to be scared of. And that makes them great and trustworthy. And it's communism. <laughs> wow, that yeah. guy's a gem. He's so he, smart. He is. He's really smart and he's funny. And that that was more actually a poignant part of that video clip. But he starts it out and it's so sarcastic. And uh, and, and he's just absolutely a, a brilliant guy. So he's... Could I ask JT to show my report from yesteryear? Oh, yeah. Yes. Because, yeah, it was from a December yep, 23rd, up. circa 2006. So all of you watching at home that didn't know what to get people as Christmas drew near, this is for you. Right. Okay. He said, just keep talking. He's pu putting it up oh, on okay. the, yep. the little uh, We had it earlier. Do, were you like a reporter or something like that in another life or what? Yeah, I interned for CBC, and then I interned for CTV, and then I worked for Global, and I worked for 100 Huntley Street as well. Wow, I don't, I don't so, think I've really know that about you, Lee. Thank God that you yeah, be, didn't become a CBC guy. Well, I was a CBC guy. It was okay. Yeah. It was okay. Yeah. You know what? That was then. 
this is now with respect to that's that. right okay. let's let's so is this you set this up for us um hit play and you'll need no that is really my voice and uh the okay. rest is self-explanatory and i was okay. actually in this mall just today Deck okay with boughs of holly they're also packed with customers racing against time I always oh, try we to can't hear it. it never I'll just make up some things. <laughs> yeah, 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 I, I need can, it. You can, it. The we can hear it. Rush shopper. <laughs> if projections by Visa are right, 500,000 shoppers will spend about $108 million today, and that's on the prairies alone. Although Christmas procrastination happens every year, this one is worse than others, as 36% of people still haven't bought all their gifts. It's been crazy since the moment we opened the door. We've had like nonstop just go, 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 phone ringing, customers lined up all day. People are finally getting in the Christmas spirit. I think it's very last minute now that we actually have some snow, but it's working out well. Better late than never. And for some, the ticking clock isn't a worry. As they say, women shop, men hunt. Absolutely. I, I don't shop. It's, I go to one place and that's it. I have it figured out before. I don't worry about it. Just get it done with. Many shoppers who are not so sure what to get decide to buy books. In fact, 60% of prairie shoppers buy books for Christmas. 50% of our business comes in the eight weeks around Christmas, easily. The problem is that only 9% of us actually want books for Christmas. All of this adds pressure to an already stressful situation. Well, sometimes it's hard to get, it's easy to get, but you don't know what they want. <laughs> Getting the, the guys and stuff's easy, girls are too hard. And really, ladies, it's too hard to buy your gifts for you. Just tell the guy what you want, seriously. <laughs> With Christmas Eve falling on a Saturday this year, the shopping spree is expected to continue. In fact, Christmas Day might be the only break that retailers get until the end of Boxing Day. In Regina, I'm Global's Lee Harding reporting. Wow. Yeah, yeah, don't worry about the sound. We've had this happen three uh, three times where the guests can't hear the uh, video. We have to figure out what the connection is that's not right. It's a bit of a complex well, I remember situation. when I got to the bottom of that escalator, yeah. there was somebody who said, I was sure you were going to fall at the end because I it just I just right. got to the bottom just as I was done talking and then, you know, take the little stutter step to get on the real thing. Yeah. yeah. Wow. Kind of so how long ago was that? Uh, well, we counted with an abacus, and uh, you know the, the newspapers were uh, chiseled uh, onto stone. They were just starting on papyrus then. Oh, it was about, <laughs> was about 2006, I guess. Okay. Yeah, 2005 wow. around the area. Fantastic! Like 15 years ago, there you were. Well, and then and then you you really you write for uh, Epic Times. Um, some, some other and for the frontier center. Yeah. Okay. Uh, and occasionally for the Western standard, I actually did an article recently on Christmas and what people were doing. And uh, some people said, you know, with their names changed that they were going to get together with their family. Right. Anyway. Don't tell anyone. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And then others were, you know, getting what... together. yeah. And there's uh, some people that are doing massive zoom calls. Uh, and some people really think that is the best thing to do, even if the government wasn't mandating it, that that's where they're at. Uh, and, um, you know, some people, one person said they usually have 18 to 25 people gathered, but this year she's still going to make a nice turkey and a nice dinner with the trimmings, but it is just going to be her and her husband. So, right. you know, it, it will be one of those years that uh, we remember where we were and what we were doing and it's marked by something sort of like uh, in past generations you yeah, have the year of the big snowstorm or the year of you know what right. have you right. and uh, this too COVID shall pass and this too shall yeah. pass we hope so you know then you hear people talking about how you know there's um you know some things that that appear like you know there will be the next strain and the next flu the next vaccine and and all of that Kent Christmas, he had a wonderful word. And you know, when he was making the prophecy for 2020 at the end of 2019, he said that the sports stadiums will be empty. And that's a pretty bold statement, but that turned out. And this year he wow. says that basically God's had enough. And he said he has delayed bringing these bad people to justice because he has given them time to repent. But the time has run out. And he said, just as Haman's noose, Bordecai, I could not be exalted in the Bible until Haman's noose had already been built, that he is going to expose these agendas and uh, it's going to be, well, we're going to like it. Sucks to be them. Sucks to be them. And a little justice would be great. 
and uh, we believe for that. I, I do. I do absolutely uh, feel that that's true. That there has been so much that has gone on, and even with what's happening in the United States, uh, the exposure of Bill Barr has been particularly shocking to me. I mean, I know some people thought he was, uh, you know, piece of work uh, before. I just uh, kind of thought, you know, that he looked like Fred Flintstone. What could be so bad? Uh, but he really has exposed himself the longer these things go on. One of the things, too, is families are learning to grapple with the different um, generations that ascribe differently to what is going on. You know, my young 23-year-old, he doesn't want to give anyone, you know, he doesn't want, he wants to be sure that he's not the one infecting anyone. And he feels really good about he, that he won't, um, you know, be harmed. He's very young, strong, uh, but he's got this really kind of almost a tender way about him that he just wouldn't want to be responsible for giving it to someone else. So I, I think that that's a, a good heart position. It's just that uh, I don't like the place of fear that has entered into the younger generation. So um, I'm struggling with making sure that the information I have that I'm like I communicated out but guess what my kids don't always think it's super exciting to watch mom's videos <laughs> so so I got to make sure that the information gets to, to them in their daily lives and maybe we all need to be you know be um, not too pushy but getting good information out so that the next generation is truly understanding what's going on because they have actually a lot of trust that I've taught them a lot of trust of you know authority respect all of these things that I believe in except when it's misplaced and except when we begin to see that there's a huge agenda that has come against us yeah you know you think about what art talked about you think about the history of Poland where it went from one form of oppression to the next form of oppression yes. to now the EU is trying to you know, Poland's fighting against the EU mandates in some ways to keep their laws and not have judges tear down all of their values. And I mean, it's very sobering because, you know, I mean, I remember uh, I did a story about, uh, I did one article called Three Things I Yearn Learned at Yad Vashem, and it was the Holocaust Memorial in Jerusalem. And one of the things that really stuck out to me was when the tour guide said, remember, this happened in a democracy. And another thing she said was when the death camps were going on, people wouldn't believe it, even though they were told. They just they could not. The Jews couldn't. You know, that that could yeah, not be happening. Right. And then, well, they, they found out. And right at the end, there was a, a massive breakout uh, from the Warsaw ghetto. So. You know, even because at first the Warsaw Ghetto had, you know, 27 exits and then, the, you know, then, they, then it had 17. And then, you know, this, it was only this underground economy that could even keep them going where the children would kind of sell goods or smuggle out money and bring things back in. And that was what was keeping it going. And so, mm. yeah, someone told me in California right now that they'll have paper covering the windows but yeah. quietly the restaurants are still open so you can walk in and and still be served right so you know we're, we're having to do these sort of uh underhanded things that you really shouldn't have to be underhanded about um well, one of the I interviews out, i did about yeah mm -hmm. well yeah well, i was gonna say one, thought, okay good uh, you know i was when you talk about uh you know underhanded things but i mean i was out at a restaurant again last night and I love restaurants and, you know, and here you are with friends and like, like it, it's so selective who they're choosing to really, you know, showing up at churches and giving, giving fines, but a restaurant that is bustling and busy. And I've been there now like three different times this week. Um, no one's giving fines out at these posh posh restaurants you know not the little guy who's lost his business or restaurant for good you know mm -hmm. so it's very selective what is happening right now well a little bit of this or maybe you're part of the same club you know uh or the same fraternity or whatever 
right? Mm -hmm. Who knows why they do what they do? Yeah. But yeah, I'm just it, glad. It, I mean, I'm not going to rat out the restaurants because I was so happy to be out with friends. You know, I was just so happy to be doing, you know, like wonderful, joyful things in the middle of all of this. Oh, yeah. And I'm glad you got to do that as well. Uh, it's it's really crazy times that we're living in. And uh, I, again, you know, it's just like when a bad storm comes in and if you didn't know the sun could shine again, you would think, oh boy, it's all over. But it, it's going to dissipate. Uh, sometimes though, you know, I mean, there's a certain amount of inertia here and the law of inertia says that something will keep going in the direction it's going at the rate that it's going unless another force makes it stop. Right. And so raising awareness and uh, having dissent and praying are part of that effort to make it stop. Absolutely. So it's going to be a good 2021. Uh, it might take a while to change gears, right. but uh, I think when it does that there's going to be a lot of positive momentum in Canada and in the world. And a lot of it's going to come right out of America. Well, Lee, I am so blessed by your life. You always have the most fascinating things to share. And uh, I look forward to many broadcasts with you this year as you share what you're learning on the front lines and uh, and the way that you sort of, you know, decipher it and, and uh, you know, bring it down to, to easy to manage bits and bites. I really appreciate that about you as we navigate all of this. And you have an incredible gift. Of course, we want everyone to know they can read you on, uh, you know, at the uh, Epic Times and you said Frontier. Yeah, fcpp.org is another place and so that's the frontier center for public policy and uh, yeah it's a great pleasure to be on your show and, we're not and maybe given all the worked at cbc uh, give, against you oh no well don't uh mother corp is its own thing and yeah well that could be topic for another day yeah. but you know we talked about having a relationship with the lord and it's very simple it says in romans 10 9 that if you confess with your mouth that jesus is lord and you believe in your heart that god raised him from the dead you will be saved and so it's very very simple but it is. Uh, how many of us have gone to church and that and never even heard that or never knew to do that so mm. i hope that some people at home tonight will do that and uh, make christmas mean all the more to them absolutely and sometimes we get down to where it's all we've got left, but it's all we actually need. So thank you very much. I appreciate that. God bless you. Have a Laura wonderful Lynn. day tomorrow with, with your loved ones. Thank you, Laura Lynn, JT. Thanks so much for all that you've been doing for our country, for yourselves. God bless you. Thank you. And uh, we will see you in 2021. It will be awesome. Thank you. God bless you. I just want to close. I don't know if we have... Uh, well, we probably don't have Christmas music, but we can do the regular music. And I'm just going to read a few verses from Luke 2. This is the Christmas story. When you get together with your family, uh, one of the things that my dad did, um, he would read Luke 2 to us. And it was really special. And it's about the birth of Jesus. And it says, In those days, Caesar Augustus issued a decree that a census should be taken of the entire Roman world. This was the first census that took place while Quirinius was governor of Syria and everyone went to their own town to register. Remember how Lee was talking about how they went to Bethlehem? So Joseph also went up from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea to Bethlehem, the town of David, because he belonged to the house in the line of David. He went there to register with Mary, who was pledged to be married to him and, is, and was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for the baby to be born, and she gave birth to the, her firstborn son. She wrapped him in swaddling clothes and placed him in a manger because there was no guest room available for them. And there were shepherds living out in the fields nearby, keeping watch over their flocks at night. An angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But guess what the Lord said? Exactly what he says to us today. Do not be afraid. I bring you good news that will cause great joy for all the people. 
Today in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. He is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign to you. You will find a baby wrapped in swaddling clothes and lying in a manger. Suddenly a great company of the heavenly host appeared with the angel, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest and in heaven and on earth, peace to those on whom his favor rests. God's favor is perfect. It's on us and it's on us, especially when we honor him and we have fear of the Lord, fear of his goodness, fear of his justice and a deep, deep love for who he is. He is the God of unconditional love. He's powerful beyond all measure. He's immutable, unstoppable, ever-present, all-knowing. He's the Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end, the Rose of Sharon, the Lily of the Valley. He is the bright and morning star. He will not be outdone by any demonic foe or any scheme of man. He is God, and He is everything. Merry Christmas, everyone. We'll see you one of these days, probably in a couple of days. Have a wonderful Christmas. God bless. You know, it's not easy to deliver the truth of what our sick world is doing, but for some of us, we feel that we have no choice. Because if we are silent about these abominable things, then we are letting evil go unchecked, and we cannot do that. For those of you wonderful people who are writing me and are sharing your encouragement, I am deeply grateful. Thank you for all the letters that you've been sending. Thank you for the donations and the support. I found out that in order to speak the truth, you have to become very, very strong. If you would go to my website at www.lauralyn.tv, you'll find all of the ways that you can contact me. Remember, my friends, all is well. All is well. Thanks for joining me.